Hello again, America, and how you doing tonight? Tonight is a very special episode for me. I have a very special guest who I consider a very good friend and somebody I met while advocating for the PACT Act. His name is Tim Jensen, and he is co-owner of Grunt Style. And uh, welcome aboard, Tim. Hey. Right on, Tim. How you doing, my friend? Oh, I'm all right. How about yourself? Oh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Living life. I'm enjoying the, the music. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. It's got a nice feel to it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's great. Thanks for having me on the show, my friend. Well, thank you for coming on. Man. Now, before we really get into our dialogue, did you serve in the military? Uh, I did. I did. Uh, you know, I, I happened to serve on, uh, in the greatest, the, the world's greatest gun club, if you will. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, I did, uh, I enlisted in 1997, um, uh, as a, uh, amphibious assault crewman, uh, old huh? 1833 was my original MOS and, uh, did some time, uh, in Pendleton and Camp Lejeune. The old armpit of the universe, Courthouse Bay. Anybody yes. out there that has been there before <laughs> knows that dump. <laughs> yes, uh, but uh, had a lot, had some fun doing doing that, and uh, then came back home after uh, that enlistment and uh, got back into doing or got, took a job doing carpentry, union carpentry in the city of Chicago. Uh, September 11th happened, and um, you know started my my journey back into the Marines. Uh, and spent some time as a reservist there in Chicago, Second Battalion, Twenty Fourth Marines, and uh, ended my career as an infantryman uh, after serving some time in Iraq with that unit. All right. Now, yeah. I've heard of Grunt Style, and we've talked a little bit, <laughs> but I'm not quite sure exactly what Grunt Style is. Yeah. Can you explain that to us? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd love to. I'd love to. And, you know, I think it's it's been a fun uh, adventure, you know, seeing this company, you know, grow from the time I've been with it uh, to where it is today. It was founded by a former drill sergeant in the Army. And uh, he took this, he wanted to take this idea of, of, you know, patriotism, love of country, all the ideas and characteristics and values that were printed upon uh, him as an, an individual coming through as an enlistment in the Army. Uh, and then becoming a drill sergeant and training uh, individuals, you know. Uh, so um, that's where the idea of Grunt Style had uh, been birthed. And from there, it just kind of blossomed and started growing. Uh, it really started accelerating in 2013. Um, and then, you know, the company had went from, you know, five employees, five, six employees to, you know, where we are today, well over 500 uh, throughout all of our positions. Uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, facility in San Antonio, where our headquarters is, San Antonio, San Antonio, Texas. And then we have a fulfillment and production operations uh, team, all three of those teams up in Carroll Stream, Illinois. So all of you that are ordering from our website, are, that's where everything is being made, uh, planned, and shipped. All that activity is happening up there. Uh, then we have uh, right now eight uh, retail positions across the United States. And we'll be growing into well over uh, uh, 15, 16, uh, or uh, right, somewhere in that area. We'll uh, end up at the end of the year. So, I'm uh, pretty excited about our growth. And, you know, the, the team that we've built over the years is extraordinary. Um, you know, we're seeing it in our, in our retail positions where, um, you know, the engagement and the interaction that is happening with uh, our fans that are coming to visit us in retail locations has uh, really been fun and engaging, and people are enjoying it. All right. And we actually had our first person uh, comment here. And they want you to come to Detroit. <laughs> Mr. Hensley, I'd love to come to Detroit. Uh, do I need to bring uh, uh, sappy plates? <laughs> <laughs> and just so, as bad as so our viewers know, they can uh, comment on the chat, they can ask questions. And uh, I'll get the questions out to Tim. Uh, when you do ask them, so feel free to go ahead and send us comments, and we'll uh, get them over to uh, Tim here, and Kevin replied <laughs> again, Kevlar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now recently, very recently, 
the Honoring Our Pact Act is passed, and it's yeah. finally been signed into law. How did Grunt Style get involved with advocating for this bill? You know, what I have come to learn throughout this entire adventure is the, uh, the divine intervention that has happened at several points along the path of this uh, journey, right? And, you know, uh, my path connected with Rosie's path, uh, man, uh, about four years ago, right? Uh, I was walking through the office um, and having conversations with uh, some of the staff and, you know, passing uh, a part of our business where we do custom sales and somebody was talking about burn pits and it kind of piqued my interest. And, uh, at that, you know, my, my, my buddy, my good friend, uh, Sergeant Frank Hazelwood, uh, he died of this in 2012 of the, to uh, of being exposed to toxins. And, um, you know, so I was interested and I walked over and started talking with the team and, you know, talked about this burn pit, uh, project they were working on. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I'd love to you know, learn more about this and talk to the, to the director or the person that is initiating the account. And that led me to Rosie. Um, and it was one conversation, uh, where I was like, you know, there's something inside of me that was telling me that I have to get involved in this project. I have to work uh, and, and, and get this thing accomplished. And at that time, it was, you know, it was, it was really just like, hey, I've been doing this for a long time and we need some help uh, to get this a little bit further and we need to start educating, you know, people. And I was like, okay, you know, and I, I've got a platform. I've got a lot of uh, people that we speak to that this would impact and, uh, uh, you know, speak to directly. Uh, you know, in their own personal health care and concerns. So, you know, we took it on. And from there, we started, you know, doing whatever we could uh, to educate and inform our audience. So inserting uh, flyers into all of our orders that was giving, you know, really useful information on, uh, you know, here's a great one that we did was uh, having the right conversations with your primary care provider, right? As yes. an individual, if you're, you know, in the VA system at this point, Right. You you need to be talking to your primary care providers about, you know, the things that you were exposed to while in Iraq and Afghanistan and other areas of the of the world that was, you know, uh, you know that we've identified. But, you know, those are being the largest. Right. Uh, but having those conversations with your doctors. So, you know, they that they are at least aware of that. Right. And, and starting those the, the conversation with the primary care provider is part of the prevention and screening process right so we started that and uh you know then we started building a podcast uh we started doing um you know uh t these l learning sessions uh digital learning sessions um the mtech the military uh, toxic exposure conference um you know where we had uh, so many individuals uh, of you know uh, background and um you know, bona fides, um, that was really, you know, educating our audience is in the best way that we know how find the subject matter experts, right? Mm -hmm. Connect them with our audience and deliver the information that is useful and educational for those people to start making informed decisions of their right. Own. Yep. And you, you made one comment there that definitely drives home for me is talking to your primary care doctor. I feel maybe four or five years ago, if I didn't start pressing the issue with my primary care doctor, I don't think my claim would have gotten approved two years ago. Because, sure. because you yeah. know, talk, talking, start talking with, with that doctor and then the specialty doctors and then going home and seeing that the, the information that we were talking about was not getting put into my records. So then I, right. the next appointment, I go, but hey, you're going to, before I leave your office, everything we talked about is getting put into my records. So you got to make sure that they do that. And definitely, yeah, there, definitely there is talk to unfortunately them. a level of meticulousness that you have to have uh, as a veteran dealing with the VA, right? You mm -hmm. have to, you have to be, you have to be that disciplined with your own medical. Uh, yeah, you got to be know, very uh, proactive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. You know, and, and if you don't, then, you know, you're going to become another byproduct of the, of the machine. Right. And, the, and and that's unfortunate. Right. We need to find better ways of, of dealing with that. And, you know, and, and I think we are. I think, you know, from what we're doing with the foundation, you know, the PACT Act was a beginning. And, you know, uh, I, you know, Rosie and I spent some time today uh, talking about some things that we're that we're working on. And, you know, we've mm -hmm. got several other pieces of legislation that uh, is important, we feel, to what the, the veteran community needs. Uh, uh, beyond uh, the PACT Act and, and adding to the PACT Act. Right. Uh, so, you know, I think there's a lot more work to be done. Yes, most definitely. And uh, for our audience who doesn't know who Rosie is, Rosie is 
uh, Rosie Torres. Her husband is Leroy Torres, and they are the co-founders of Burn Pits 360. They pretty much led the charge on the advocating for the PACT Act. And uh, plus, if it wasn't for them to, I definitely wouldn't be sitting here today interviewing Tim. So they, they've opened up the doors for a lot of veterans and definitely going to get a lot of health care for them. So just so you know, it's Rosie Torres and her husband's Leroy. And uh, now that very first meeting you had with Rosie, I heard she asked you a very important question as far as helping her out. And it, it involved some sort of release that you did. Um, like mm. some, some kind of flyer or something. You got some information out for her that she was having a hard time getting out. I could be wrong. So. Uh, you know, there was over, over, uh, our relationship, uh, you know, again, uh, I talk about the divine interventions that, uh, have occurred, uh, along this path and, and some of the things that have, have happened, right. And, you know, Rosie, uh, is a big, is a big thinker, right. Uh, she, yes. she knows what, 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 how to, uh, or what she wants to do. And she's going to find people that, uh, you know, how to get those things accomplished for her. Um, and I'm, you know, and, and I've been uh, part of that, uh, you know, plan. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it has been a lot of fun. We've done a lot of crazy stuff together uh, yes. over four years. I mean, imagine and, and bless her heart and, and Leroy, right? You know, they've been at this game for you know well over a decade, right? And mm -hmm. you know, 12, 13 years, right? And I played only a small, small portion of this in four years of it, and you know, uh, I don't, I don't take any any credit for anything. You know, I've just been a, a, a good thought partner with her and you know i dared to take that path and walk it with her and 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 you know and do some crazy stuff right because yes. i'm just that crazy enough type of guy i guess <laughs> and i got a really incredible team of people like run style that are willing to to you know uh, let me uh, go out and do those crazy things because they know it's important uh, uh, for our community um and you know that's that's and that's where we put a lot of our attention now when you were talking with Rosie over the course of getting involved with uh, this. When did you find out that John Stewart and John Field were also part of this team? Uh, it was uh, it wasn't too long after that, maybe two three months um, that uh, they were getting involved, um, and, that, and that really set things off into another uh, level of the stratosphere. I'm sorry, I've got dogs running through my house. <laughs> yeah, mine are above me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, so it's that's. I think that set off a a, a series of uh, of next level uh, of the adventure. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so the the adventure went. Uh, it took it took another step, uh, and it was, and I think it's you know, there's a lot that came with that, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, we see, uh, you know, today, like through the whole, the, to the whole uh, conversation. Um, okay, thanks, buddy. <laughs> we see through the whole uh, conversation, how, um, um, you know, people, this has become very political, right? And, yes. you know, in, unfortunately, John's taken a lot of flack for the work that he's done within you know, this. And, you know, you know, let's be honest and clear here. Like, the reason John got involved is, you know, one, he, he, he gives a shit, excuse my right. language, right? And, uh, and two, he's ran this playbook before, right? Him and John Field, mm -hmm. they ran this playbook and, and got the, the 9-11 fun, uh, bill funded into law and into mandatory spending so that it can never go away. And that's exactly what Rosie was looking for when uh, she was looking for that next partner that would be able to take the ball further down the field, right? Because this is a game of yards. This isn't you make a pass and you run it to the you run it in for a touchdown. No, no, my friends. Like there's a along this entire time, you know there were there were points where you take the ball down the field and then there are points where you got knocked back, right? And you had to yes. fight for those grounds again. And you know very well, Tim, right? Yes. Um, but. You know that's that's politics, and you know that's the level that we needed. We need we you know, Rosie needed that person that could take it to the next level, 
Um, you know, we did we did our part, and our part would be played again. Uh, you know, that's was the beauty of all this is that as we man maneuvered our way through the space, there was the need for all these different uh, resources and aspects that everybody that Rosie brought to the table, and Rosie used them very uh, strategically to to yes. maneuver her plan through, and it was fabulous. Now, you and I first met when the Senate held their Veterans Affairs Committee hearing on the PAC Act. They had, the Senate had just originally passed their version and they were discussing the one that just came over from the House. Now, I sat directly behind the VA secretary and when I was listening to him, there were times where it actually sounded like he was actually sincere in what he was saying about about this bill needing to be passed did you happen to get sure. that same feeling yeah i think i think what uh i think where you're going is you know i think everybody that sits in that role honestly tries to to um, you know do their best right i don't think anybody mm -hmm. goes into any role trying to you know make it worse right <laughs> right but you know some it is a political point of position Right. And that's and that's that's the difficulty in which, you know, it's hard uh, to you know think back to, you know, really great, uh, you know, secretaries of the VA. Right. I think, um, you know, Secretary Shulkin, I think he was a great individual and he did a lot for the VA to advance it in, uh, into more of the modern uh, warfighters needs. Um, you know, uh, but, you know, he was only one person that you know, was leading for a period of time and he still continues to influence. I think what we heard from Secretary McDonough uh, was another individual, much like uh, Secretary Shulkin, that cares about the veteran and wants to make it a better system that everybody has the opportunity to participate in because he believes firmly and I'm not blowing smoke up anybody's ass here. I don't do that. That's not my style. Uh, but I believe that he believes listening to him talk and the conversations that I've had with him is that veterans do better when they heal together. And I believe that, right? Because there is a, a level of, of sharing and those, and those, and those shared experiences that is part of the healing process within our community when it comes to specific injuries um, that, that, that we rely on the VA for. Now he had made a statement shortly after that hearing where he stated that he wanted this bill to pass because he knew he could go ahead and start having these claims approved and just add presumptives, and he didn't really need the law to do this. But he wanted this passed before he started doing this in case something happened to him that whoever his successor was had to follow what had already begun and could not take anything away from our, from us veterans. Um, right. Now, do you feel that that was the right move for him to come out and say something like that? Well, I think so, um, because it speaks to the, you know, listen, like, let me, I'll put, we, we talked for a generation about mm -hmm. what we've done to the Vietnam veterans. Right, yep. in Asian yes. origin, watching oh, you know all, all of those people die. Yes, think about that, ladies and gentlemen. Think about that. I'm 44 years old, man. I saw my dad's friends, you know, come home from Vietnam and were really messed up from the stuff that they were exposed to, and you know, eventually passed away. Yep. Right. Yes. Like we have a responsibility here to make sure that we never do that again. And, you know, that's what I think that everybody was focused on what we were doing. Um, and, you know, when it comes to making this, you know, uh, a, a, you know, as we go back and talk about like the 9-11 the bill uh, or the, 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 the compensation fund there is making it mandatory, making it forever until legislation is passed that is no longer needed. Right. You know, if we if we don't do it that way and we put it into a discretionary style of, of budgetary you know, annual process, you know, we have the opportunity of, of, a, of political biasness or political influence that can shut a program down uh, and the funding of that program down, more importantly, because of political needs. And that's what we saw with the, 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 the gamesmanship that was played on this particular bill. You know, the, 20, the, la the 11th hour maneuvering of the Republican Party because, you know, they uh, got beat on two bills by the Democrats 
you know, to pull 25 Republicans off of something or voted for over nonsense. You know, that, you know, that's the level of, of things that we're talking about here is like, you know, this is, it's not necessary. Um, and, you know, I think it was very smart for the secretary to say, you know, this, this is something that needs to live beyond the ability, you know, of, of the secretary to be able to say yes or no. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Um, when, uh, things started to heat up a bit as far as the bill getting passed and Republicans were, you know, actually fighting amongst themselves, it seemed, over this bill. Oh, yeah. They won't hear that on the news. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> there was a press conference that was held. And after that, um, Kevin Hensley and I, the gentleman who uh, okay. chimed in there, we, we needed to head back to Ohio. Because I one was trying to get, I had another rally that I was doing in support of the PACT Act, and he had some other business that he needed to take care of. And, uh, but as we were getting ready to head over to where I was parked at, somebody in in the group near us asked if there was a a food court over there there, because we were parked yeah. at Union Station. And of course we said yes, and it was air conditioned, and that's definitely what a lot of you need. It was just to get away from the hustle and bustle over at the Capitol building. And you guys, it was you, Rosie, Amanda Barbosa, and two other women, and then Kevin and I. And yeah. we all went over to the food court to have uh, some food. Right. And there was a discussion about uh, holding mass rallies and and uh holding some demonstrations and then all of a sudden somebody says hey let's sleep out on the capitol steps and that right there i knew if that was going to happen this was going to shame a lot of people in the high up positions sure now when that conversation started at the train station, who who initiated it? <laughs> well, I'll, 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 I think to give it a little bit more context, I think it's appropriate to tell how we got to that position, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, after that press conference conference at ten thirty that was held by uh, the VSOs and, and um, Rosie and myself, we were there. Um, mm -hmm. You know. That came off of a morning of strategizing where we all had our heads down. Like we've all felt defeated because the bill just, you know, got shut down by 25 Republicans to change a vote in the 11th hour, right? Yes. So we're sitting all in this at the VFW headquarters wondering. We got the attorneys there. We're everybody's strategizing or everybody's talking. And uh, we're like, okay, we, we got the message. Um, and this is what we're going to do after the message. So we go over to the swamp. Um, it's the area where they do all of the press conference kind of fitting yes. and uh <laughs> we we do this press conference right and then after that we all break up into groups and we start going and doing what we've been doing for the last four years of walking the uh, halls work. walking yeah. the halls of congress we walked the halls before covid we walked the halls during covid we walked the halls after january 6th we've been walking the halls for a very long time and during all of those uh times security was a little bit uh more uh uh, difficult to get into the building but mm -hmm. you know once you're inside the building if, you know and you follow the rules you're pretty much good to go and that's what we were operating all off of was positive intent to go have conversations with 25 senators or change their vote right. right and what happened from that was um ultimately rosie myself um and a few widowers and um, you know, uh, family members and children uh, were escorted off of the property uh, by yes. the Capitol Police. <laughs> they were called on by one particular Texas senator, and or the staff of that particular Texas senator, and that's is our belief, and that is you know, you know, till till this day has not been reputed for whatever reasons. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and so we ended up at the Capitol uh, at the train station there, and we were wondering what the hell we're going to do next. Right, because it didn't sound like everybody was having uh, great success uh, with talking to these Republicans um, right. because of the politics involved, right? So we were mm -hmm. all like, oh, man, this is not going good, right? 
And that was finally where, you know, Rosie's like, what's that thing called where you guys stand watch all the time? Like Firewatch. And I was yes. like, you know what? We ain't fucking leaving. We're not fucking leaving. We're staying right. here and we're going to stay here until they pass this bill. And Rosie's like, really? You, you want to do that? And she's like, you want mm -hmm. like, we're staying here. We're staying here. Call Leroy <laughs> and tell him that we're going to be home in a, you know, until, uh, in a while. I'm going to call my wife, Amanda, call your husband. And, uh, you know, we came up with a fire watch. Mm -hmm. um, and from that point forward, uh, myself, Amanda Rabusa, bless her heart. You want to talk yes. about a savage, savage chick, my friend. Oh, no kid. Like she went 58 hours without a, a blink of sleep. Yeah, while we're, while we're on that uh, hill, man. Like, uh, so you know, we went, we went. You know, she there was representation on the Capitol for the next six days uh, because of that decision uh, to say, you know what, you know, we're not going to do it. And 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 here's what, and here's the 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 end of it. It feels it feels like to me like a like a like an old Scooby Doo cartoon, right? I've been saying this you know a lot in, in my go arounds here, but you know, it feels like. You know, at the end of the uh, the cartoon, when you rip the mask off, and it's like the the villain's like, and I would have got away with it if it wasn't for those pesky kids, right? Yes. You know, they would have got away with it had mm -hmm. we did not had we not sat on the steps. That bill yes. would have never gone anywhere. They have all would have got the claps on the backs and thinking to themselves, "Hey, at least we tried," but uh, couldn't do it because that oh, the Democrats tried to fill it with pork uh, and it makes yeah. some other crap. Uh, about something that is not true, right? Uh, so, you know, I think what we did was uh, historic. I think it'll be, you know, something that will be talked about for a very long time. Um, and I'm just, again, proud to be part of, you know, people that are willing to take those daring steps because that's all this was from the moment, uh, from the very beginning, the Rosie, Rosie stood on the path herself. It was just the determination to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Now, just so our listeners and viewers understand after that last press conference after the the uh bill got voted down they uh s several senators did sign a bunch of us into the senate building so we could go and talk to senators we all met at senator gildebrand's office and we're in her conference room and i know rosie at that time was talking about doing something big but wasn't quite sure but she went off on to, I think, with you and that you guys went to go see that se senator from Texas. And John Stewart and I, we went down to talk to Senator Portman, who's my senator. And I think somebody released a video of our, I wouldn't say confrontation with his staff. Because the young man, he he looked like he was only about 18 years old, only and he was only there to answer phones. And he he got put on he he got thrown under the bus by the senator. So he he had called the senator, says, Hey, these guys want answers. What do I tell them? And all of a sudden he goes, Well, the senator says the only reason he voted no today or last night was to get back at Democrats. Yeah. That yeah. that set a chain of events in that office where several people got upset me included john as well but then we realized you know we weren't talking to the right the right individual he 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 was just like a receptionist so he he yeah. he doesn't know he, he had no clue what was going on he didn't even know what the bill was about to be honest with you so so we left and we went on to another senator's office and his staff came out his legislative staff came out and they were talking to us and they he's basically said the same thing that yeah. Yeah. they voted no just to get back at democrats so yeah. well here's the secret here's the dirty secret ladies and gentlemen uh and it's gonna it, it should terrify you <laughs> is washington is run by a bunch of 25 year olds <laughs> yes it is right they they're the ones that are doing all I the don't, work yeah i don't right? think there was any le any legislative staff that was over the age of 25. right right so you get all these staffers that, that work for the, these great senators you know doing all the legwork preparing doing the research and you know doing all the writing on the bills da, 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 right um but you know the, what happened here was the republicans uh did not expect there to be any pushback 
you right. know, because they 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 did the the, the thing, right? They popped the mm-hmm. they popped the star cluster. Hey, budget. Everybody's yes. gonna be fine. They're, they'll be able to walk away from this. It's gonna be good to go. But there was a group of us said, no, that's uh-huh. that's a lie. Right. That is a lie, and we weren't gonna take it. You know, so you know, I don't think that the the staffers had a time to collectively hive up and say, okay, what's the story that we can go and cover for all of our senators, and then go back to their respective stations because that's what happens. Yes. That's what mm-hmm. happens, right? Um, and we got them, uh, we got them before they could, you know, have a reasonable position, right? Because right. Look at how, look how callous that 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 Texas senator was when he was sitting there delivering his budget thing. You know, this Dr. Pepper right. as he's getting out mm-hmm. to somewhere knows where right like get mm-hmm. the fuck out of here <laughs> exactly <laughs> now after that meeting in portman's office our group headed back to senator gildebrand's office and we knew right there and then we caught him off guard and we were hoping that yeah. your group had gotten to those senators before they all could collaborate and it seems like we did then so john stewart and i and the senator and a few other people we're we're in there they're trying to find me some gatorade and uh and for some reason my walker wouldn't fold up so people could walk past me and and so we're all joking about that in walks the capitol police yeah yeah you folks were still down where you were at and they said okay who was at portman's office so a bunch of us raised our hands and they said okay you 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 got to go and Senator Gildebrand's like, wait a minute. What, what's the problem? And they said, well, they don't have an escort. And she says, I'm their escort. They're in my office with me. And my staff took them down to these two offices. They had escorts. And they says, well, yeah. one of the senator said one guy with a walker was yelling and screaming and, and yelling and caused a disturbance. So they're going to have to go. So we, we, we just agreed, and we didn't want to get the senator in trouble because she's been fantastic in helping us try to, you know, advocate with, for this bill and everything. So we, we, we left, and at that time, John gets a call on his phone saying, hey, where are you? And he says, well, I'm getting escorted out of the building. He says, no, you need to turn around because you have to go film a, the uh, very first seg- uh, episode for this season's uh, The Problem With. So he's like, oh, good, I'm out of this trouble. <laughs> so they right, escorted right. him to wherever his, his crew was set up to film. The rest of us got booted out on our butts. But uh, yeah. And then that's yeah. that's then that's a, shortly after that, that's when we ran into you and Rosie and them, and that's when we headed over to Union Station, had some lunch. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the Kemmel police are doing their jobs, right? I get it. Right. Like, but uh, I, I would say there was maybe – there wasn't uh there was no reason to to be we, we were doing the same thing that we did we were, everybody was escorted everybody had all the right things everybody had uh, the the scheduled in the meetings right that was yep. another thing so it was like the goal line the 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 goal line was being moved every like we got that well you know well you didn't do this uh well, well we did that here right here and then like well it's, uh, you know after january 6th well like no we've been doing this since and after january 6th like you know so it's like it was all just kind of weird like yes. it was all just manufactured but anyways um you know i don't want to you know again i think the capitol police did a extraordinary job you know they they talked yes. to oh, yes. you know with the entire time we were out on the steps you know and mm-hmm. we had a really good time with them and we include them as much as uh, they were able to on uh, some of the shenanigans that we we're doing like our carry you know karaoke we we're having birthday parties uh, mm-hmm. We were doing all sorts of different things to keep ourselves awake because at the two o'clock hour on Firewatch, as I've said a million times, it gets a little bit weird because you know it's the it's that witching hour. <laughs> yes, and also got to give the uh, Capitol Police some more props here because they're the ones who took all the food that was left over and brought it to the homeless people. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, they've I mean, been. It was a really great experience, and uh, you know. For 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 a lot of reasons and then not so many good reasons, but uh, right. you know, again, like I yeah, I sit there and I say I'm like I still think about it. I'm like it's ridiculous that veterans had to to petition their government in that method, right? Um, mm-hmm. Something that was completely politically manufactured, rather than you know the time that could have been spent um, doing something more productive. I agree. Now, so people who 
didn't know about the fire watch or what we were doing advocating for this bill when they started sleeping on the capitol steps local restaurants and citizens and that started donating food and and water and i think there was more food there than i have ever seen in my life these people <laughs> were donating like crazy yeah. there must have, when when it was all said and done and the bill passed on that tuesday night there must have been 75 cases of water still that were unopened oh, yeah. so oh, yeah. Yeah. so we, we talked with the capitol police and they says yeah we'll we'll go ahead and take these down to the homeless homeless folks and we'll, we'll. Yeah. so so none of that yeah. went to I'll waste tell you, we didn't go without anything right you know, you know uh the generosity of the american people uh the the the, the ability for everybody to get together on this particular issue like again it brings hope it should bring hope to us in many respects you know with the, mm -hmm. people want us to believe that we're politically p d divided right but we're only that way because they want us to think that way they want us to pr they want us to act like that so they continue to drive things between us like right come on guys like we can do better. We can do better, and and I think we did do better when you know everybody came together. You know, we were getting stuff. We can Canadians sent us whiskey. You know, the French yes. Foreign Legion sent magic magic uh, brownies. Um, you know, all sorts of different things coming from all over the place. You know, people that were working in D.C. would get off at strange hours of the night uh, on their on their job, and they would come and sit 15, 20, 30, an hour of their time with us just to say, you know what, I'm here to support you, and this is all I can provide. Mm -hmm. Hey, Roger that, man. Thank you, or, or Gal, thank you for coming out and spending yes. the time with us because it matters, right? Every exactly. Every moment, every piece of effort mattered. And, you know, I think to, to the point, you know, being one of the, being the first man on the uh, first man on the scene and the first man and uh, last man off, you know, I think we did everything that we said we were going to do. We provided uh, our, our message to be heard. We did it in a respectful manner. We yep. didn't allow violence to happen. We saw exactly. some crazy stuff, but we didn't allow oh, violence yeah, we to did. happen. Yeah. And we left the place better than we found it. That's right. Now, now that this bill is law, what does this experience mean to you and your family? I think, you know, for me, you know, the first thing that I did when we walked out of the um, Senate building or, you know, the Capitol uh, on the on the eve of the vote uh, that passed 86 to 11, um, the, I didn't call my wife, I didn't call my mom, I didn't call my dad, I didn't call my children. Uh, called my friend Frank's daughter. And I took her up with me a couple times uh, to the Capitol on this event over the years. And I made a promise to her a long time ago um, that I, well, I would do whatever I could uh, for her father uh, and, 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 and what was left behind there. And, uh, and I think I, I kept that promise, right? I think I, I held true to it. And yes. I, you know, I called her and had an incredible, incredible conversation with her. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy. I'm just happy that, um, you know, for me, that, that, that has been able to be addressed. Um, you know, I have my own issues. I have some autoimmune issues that are now just starting to come apparent in my life that come forward in my life, mm -hmm. you know, and it, uh, you know, that means, it means something personal for me. I have, I have these things I'm going to work through. Um, but most importantly, my son's graduating Naval boot camp next week, right? Oh, wow. He's going to be off in the Navy doing Navy things. And this bill or this law protects him. Yes, it does. For many things that he's going to come across in the future, right? So, mm -hmm. I think I got. I think we covered the past. I think we covered the present, and I think we covered the future with this bill. And that's what I'm extraordinarily proud about. Yes. Now, during one of the trips to Washington D.C., I brought my wife and my son with me, and it was the first vote on the bill where they all. Um, the bill, the bill passed. So we're all happy. Right. We're celebrating. We're thinking, okay, it's got to go back to Congress, but we know it's going to pass there. Then on to the president. 
Right. My son, as we're coming out of the Senate building to go to the press right. conference, he's holding the gate open for everybody. Right. And I mean, hundreds of people are coming out of the Senate building at that time, and he's holding the gate. All of a sudden, John Feel runs up there and he says, Fuck all these people, dude. Come with us. So he picked him up and says, Come on, let's go. And then, so my wife and I, we're, we're talking with uh, a couple senators and we turn around and there's John Feel and John Stewart wrestling with our son on the lawn of the Capitol. All right. To me, that, that meant so much to me that, you know, how many kids can say they, they actually got to wrestle with a celebrity on the Capitol lawn, let alone <laughs> sit in the Capitol to watch a vote? You know, yeah. I think my son, they yeah. said my son was the second kid under the age of 18 to be in the, in the Senate gallery since COVID started. Now, we, we know yeah. we know the, who the first child was, and rightfully so. She should she should have been there. But. Uh, the yeah. the. The bonding that went on during this whole process of advocating for this bill. Is something that I know my son will never forget because right. our senators called several times and he's gotten to speak to him on the phone. He's met him more than once. He's met him several times and, uh, and we're putting a scrapbook together. So my son doesn't forget any of this because, you know, being 12, there's going to be another event that comes up in his life and it's going to overshadow this, you know, like his first kiss, his first date, something like that. So we're making a scrap sure. to make sure he doesn't forget what we did for this. I mean, my wife and my son sacrificed a lot just so I could go to D.C. Then all the worrying they did because, well, you know, I, I got to use a walker and I'm on yeah. oxygen most of the time. So, so of course, she, my, my wife, pulling her hair out whenever I was in DC helping out somebody was taking care of me. But uh yeah. there's one line that on that Tuesday morning that I will never forget that that somebody said I'm sitting under a tree, sitting on my walker, pouring a bottle of water over my head, and walks here comes John Stewart walking up and he says, Tim, you all right? I says, Yeah, I'm okay. Are you all right? I says, yeah. And all of a sudden, he puts his hand on my shoulder and he yells out as loud as he can, will somebody go get this man some fucking Gatorade already? <laughs> 50 people ran. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 50 yeah, people yeah. ran. And uh, well, yeah. they didn't bring back Gatorade, but they brought back Pedialyte. So that, that's much better. And so for him to just walk up and call me by my first name. And then if I... It, my son called him Mr. Stewart. He says, no, no, no. We're family. It's John. And my son's 12. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. you know, the, the the bonding that went on is something that I will never forget. Yeah, I mean, listen, um, you're, you're building like long, you're spending long periods of time on a very passionate subject with people and you're watching all the people around you fall down dying. Like, my goodness, could, could I can't think of... Any other time other than combat that ever that that situation has ever happened to me, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, right. Th these these relationships, you know, I think that we've created over the years of doing this are lifelong, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. I don't uh, ever would have met you and I, or you know, uh, become I've yeah. become dear friends with Susan. You know, I've, I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've now cherished that relationship, and it's so great. And you know, the great thing about a lot of, of this is a lot of us don't even see eye to eye on politics. Right, if we were right. To, you know, it's you know, we we all come from different aspects and different parts of of this country, different uh, backgrounds and the ways that we've grown up, mm -hmm. um, and influence it, right? And you know, but we're we're we all work together on on something that was bigger than all of us. Uh, there was no ego involved in any of it, to include you know you know big celebrities like John Feel and and uh, John Stewart. Like they never, it was never about them. It was never right. about. Um, you know, anything other than getting something passed that was going to have such a monumental and historic effect on the veterans of 
you know, yesterday, today, and the future veterans that you know, will be exposed. Let me repeat that: will be, be exposed, exposed to something that the fucking government does to to us. Yep. Now, you brought up a good point because we, all of us who are advocating for the bill, put our political differences aside. None of that was ever mentioned. We didn't talk about that at all. We always concentrated on the PACT Act. Yeah. And during a lot of our speeches, a lot of people were saying this isn't about red or blue or Republican or Democrat. It's an American issue. Now, I'm not sure if your senators or Congress or congressmen passed any information on to you, but mine sure did. And and several others that during that entire week of the fire watch, they received more phone calls than they have their entire career up, up at the Capitol. Oh, sure. Dude, I'll tell you why, right? And it was, again, like, you know, we, we <laughs> this is, I, I, I said this, I said this to a few of the people. I was like, man, you guys are messing with the wrong people. These are combat veterans and they all have been employed uh, to bring, you know, uh, a certain level of, of, uh, of intelligence against the enemy of our country. Right, and they're going to employ those, some of those tactics onto the situation here, and it's going to overpower what they what they uh, come to understand as the, the the political norm. Right, so all we did was disrupt their ability to get their message out. Right, um, mm -hmm. which was complete garbage and, and full of lies, and overcome it with um, you know the, the, what we understand. And learn throughout the years of fighting psychological warfare against an insurgency in two countries over 20 years. So, mm -hmm. like, this was not something that we were just going to walk into. Be like, yeah, okay, we're, yep. uh, we're going to dominate this, uh, like we do dominate everything else when combat, or we just when veterans are are are, are focused on uh, a, a mission. Right, we do what the mission mm -hmm. demands us to do, and that's win. That's right. Now we have another question here for you. So let me bring this up. All right. It's from Kevin again, but I think it's a very good question. In regards to what happened with the VSOs and or veteran agencies, do you think the PACT Act showed our veteran community how to advocate for future legislation? I think what we will see here is, um, or what I believe or what I hope, Right. I mean, all of those package, all those words into a nice little box. Mm -hmm. uh, but I hope that we get more involved. Right. Because listen, here's the problem that we have in the United States of America is that we don't get involved. We sit and we bitch and complain from the sidelines like we have all the information, but we don't do anything about it. Right. That's the problem we have in our country. We are too apathetic and we have no critical thinking skills. Uh, or I shouldn't say no, but we're not we're not employing them to the best of our abilities, and then we're not getting involved, right? So that allows mm -hmm. you know bad politics, allows partisanship to to control a what what is the people's system into a you know something nefariously different than what we what we signed up for, and mm -hmm. you know it's our responsibilities as Americans to get involved in our politic and to be more involved. Uh, in the way that we vote, in the way that we are engaging in the local level, uh, the way that we you know, hold our political uh, representatives accountable, right? Because th at the end of the day, they, 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 they work for you. They work for the American people. And they just can't run roughshod all over right. people and think that they you know, can do that because you know, they have this fancy title of honorable in front of their, in their name. That's, you know, I don't think so. <laughs> right. Now, at some of the speeches and rallies that I was involved in, I, after I would speak and got pulled off to the side by people to ask me some questions and everything, I was telling them how to look up bills. You know, if they can get the bill number, they don't even need the bill number. They just need portions of the name of the bill, and they can go to government right. or go to congress.gov and they can bring up the bill and read it for themselves. It, every single bill that gets filed at, on the Capitol becomes public knowledge. Another yep. thing, too, is I was teaching people how to look up voting history of their representatives. 
especially the ones that they voted for. You know, right? It, it's all public now. This is it should be this, basic stuff. This is yes. basic civics. There right? was you know? you'd be surprised how problem. many people I met didn't oh, no. know they could do that. <laughs> I would not be surprised at all because I've seen a lot of the backlash here, right? That, you know, uh, you know, people, people say they have an opinion on the bill, but not one person that you, you really start pressing on them can say with any conviction. Yes. I read all 150 pages of the bill and I, you know, here's, here's the areas that I, you know, I'm looking at that I would like to have uh, a greater conversation on. No, everybody else is just, is, uh, you know, what, what people are doing and what have become, has become the accepted, uh, within you know debate is regurgitating some some you know presumably smart individual uh, that is has a following of people uh, that thinks you know that has a platform right and right. you know we see it all across left right center in the in the body politic right and you see how information gets traded right because it is mm-hmm. a currency you see how information gets traded in these conversations and how yes. the capital of it starts becoming quite partisan um and and that's a problem and yes you know i think that we need to do a better job as uh, americans to get involved and in, in to stop that and to you know one you know just have some intellectual curiosity if if you're going to make a statement on something you know like i don't know like have the intellectual curiosity to go you know, through it and, and 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 really do the research yourself yeah it takes time and you know, time is valuable. I get it. I, you know, I, I know that more than probably the average person, but like, you know, spend the, spend your time where it's, where it's most important. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and I think you know, being involved in our politics, that is, that's an area of being in, involved because, you know, it, the, the power of the pen is sure mightier than the power of the sword, as we have heard the, 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 uh, those, those adages before. Matter of fact, that's what they taught us at Air Force basic training. Pen's mightier than the sword. Unless you're flying an F-16, then you know, hey. (laughs) Well, there, Mr. Jensen, I want to thank you for coming on today. This was definitely an honor for me because I know we have, I think we can call each other friends, and I know our advocating paths are going to come, not bumping into each, but we're going to see each other in person again somewhere down the line for some issue or another concerning veterans. And uh, so thank you for coming on to my show. And uh, I'll talk to you again soon. All right, my friend. And I want to say thank you uh, for having me on. Um, And thank you for all of the the work that you do and you continue to do. And I have uh, hopes for your uh, podcast to be quite successful. And you uh, interview the most interesting of peoples that bring value to our community. That's the plan. And uh, so far, it's working out. Got you on, so we're good to go. All right, Tim, you have a good one now. Semper Fi, my friend. You too. Well, in the Air Force, we always said aim high. So, (laughs) (laughs) But you got to admit, we had the best chow halls. Uh, Air Force had the best chow halls. I'll tell you this: one, I will have a, I will have a party for Grunstall at some point, and all of the um, uh, the waiters will be in the finest class A's of the Air Force with a nice napkin over the uh, the oh, arm yes. here. There we go. <laughs> all right, sir. Thank you very much, and I'll talk with yeah. you here again real soon. Ciao. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This will be posted on YouTube here shortly, and we will. Also be on Pandora, Spotify, Amazon. And again, thank you so much, uh, Tim Jensen from Gruntstow for coming on and t- talking with me today. This has truly been an honor. And to everybody else out there, have a good evening.